Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about how to account for investments in companies and IFRS and ASPI, and I'm going to show you some examples. Specifically, we're going to talk about topics about passive investments, significant influence, and then control. If you like what you see, please remember to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. I try to make videos weekly and I'm always looking for ideas, so if you have any, let me know in the comments below, or if you have any questions as well, let me know. So the overview for today is that we're going to talk about what are the types of investments, how do you account for these investments, and what's the difference between IFRS and ASPE, and then I'm going to end it off with showing you an example of how I would answer a case question. So now let's talk about what are the types of investments one company can have when they purchase the shares of another company. So the first type of investment we want to talk about is the passive investment, which means you own less than 20% of a company. It's also known as they don't actually know who you are. So I always give the example of if you walked into the office of another company and you told them that you want this, that, and everything else changed, and they just give you a blank stare and then just show you the door, then essentially you have passive investment, which means you actually have no say in the company. The next type of investment is called significant influence. And that's if you own 20% or more of a company, or if you have some board representation, or you have other factors that give you a significant influence of the company. And this is also known as if you walk into the company, they know your name and they let you sit in the boardroom while you wait, then probably you have significant influence and in that you can influence their decisions. With this type of investment, you don't just look at the share ownership, you want to look at the qualitative factors as well, such as are you the major supplier or are you the major purchaser of this company and other qualitative factors. So now let's talk about the last type of investment you can make when you purchase the shares of another company. And this one's called control or consolidation, which essentially means you own more than 50% of the company and it's also known as you can do whatever you want. So it's essentially you're the big boss of the company and you can tell everyone what to do and how to run the company and no one can tell you what to do. So now we're gonna talk about how to account for these investments. So if we're using IFRS and you have a passive investment, which means you have less than 20% ownership of a company, you essentially can choose one of two ways. The first way is fair value through profit and loss and the second one is fair value through OCI. If you want to know in detail how to account for these two investment methods in terms of the debits and credits, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to make a video that explains these in detail. On a high level, it means that all the money that you get from your investments essentially go through your net income or your other comprehensive income. Now let's talk about significant influence. Under IFRS, there's not many choices you can have. You have to account for this using the equity method. What this means is that the income that you receive from this company in proportion to the shares that you own will increase the share ownership of this asset. At the same time, it will give you a gain on the net income. If this company gave out dividends, you would actually get dividends based on the proportion of shares that you own, and you would decrease your share ownership by the amount of dividends you received. And then you will debit cash for the amount that you received. Lastly, we come to consolidation, which means you own more than 50% of the company and you can do whatever you want. So under this type of investment, you have to consolidate that company, which essentially means you have to add their assets with your assets, their liabilities with your liabilities. In general, when getting tested by CPA on these three methods, normally they're not gonna get you to do consolidation because it's a lot of work and that you're not gonna have a lot of time on a case to actually do the full consolidation. So most likely you'll be debating between is it a passive investment or is it a significant influence? And it really comes down to those qualitative factors that I told you that really dictates if it's a passive investment or a significant influence. So now that you know how to account for them using IFRS, let's talk about how to account for them using ASPE. It's actually quite similar. In all options, you're allowed to use the cost method which means you just record the investment at cost. For passive investments, there's no fair value through OCI because in ASPE, there's no such thing as other comprehensive income. Also, in terms of consolidation, there's always an option to use the equity method if you don't want to use the consolidation or the cost method. So now let's talk about some case writing tips when using ASPE. If the company that you're working for is limited on resources or is just a small company, most likely you'll probably choose the cost method for them because that's the easiest one to account for and it takes up the least amount of resources. However, if it's a normal functioning company and has okay resources or doesn't even tell you that you know they're strained on resources, most likely you'll pick one of the other methods. So now let's do a case example where we apply what we just learned. In this example, company A bought 15% of company B. In addition, company A holds one out of seven board seats of company B. Both companies are accounted for in IFRS. 
Company A would like to know how to account for this investment. If you want to make this question a little bit more difficult, I would add in the piece of Company A would also like to know how to account for the future income and dividends that Company B will give them. So now let's look at my response. I try to structure it in a way where it talks about the issue, what the standard says, and then my analysis, and then my recommendation at the end. If you want to get depth, you have to go through the various steps to be able to talk about the issue in detail. So when talking about the issue, I try to keep it short because there's not a lot of marks given for just describing the issue. So I go right to the point. I talk about how it's company A purchases 15% of company B and would like to know how to account for this investment. Then I talk about what does the standard say? And I say, as per IFRS, since not more than 50% of the company is purchased, this would not be considered a consolidation. I state that sentence because I want to talk about how it eliminates one of the three options, and now we're down to two. And then I go on talking about this transaction can either be a purchase of a significant influence or a passive investment. Remember, you could always copy down the criteria from the handbook or recite it by memory, and both of them will get you the same marks. Now we go into the main part of your issue, which is the analysis. I talked about how based on company A purchasing 15% of company B, it does not purchase enough shares to be considered a significant influence. However, when having one seat on the seven person board, it is reasonable to consider that company A has a significant influence over the operations of the company as they can influence the company on the strategic direction through the voice on the board and its voting rights from the shares. When I go into concluding on this issue, I always write, I would recommend, or I would recommend, something in that manner so that it's clear to the reader that this is actually my recommendation. So I wrote, as a result, I would recommend company A account for company B as a significant influence in associate using the equity method. Under this method, the proportionate of profit and loss from company B will increase the investment asset and provide income to company A. Any dividends will result in a reduction of investment asset for company A and be an increase to cash. On the left, I put some journal entries there. These numbers don't really reflect what's going on in the case, but I just wanted to give you guys an example of what are the accounts, debit, and credit. Something key to remember is that whenever they give you numbers in the case of how much company B has earned, you will always want to multiply that amount by the proportionate of shares that company A gets. So it's not always that they take in 100% of company B's income. In this case, they only own 15% of their shares, so they should only account for 15% of their net income and 15% of the dividend paid out. Thanks again for watching my video. If you liked what you saw, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. If you have any comments, please let me know below. And if you have time, feel free to check out one of my other videos.